How would you like to never miss a three foot putt again? Remember earlier I told you that over 40% of your score comes on this putting green. And we're gonna equip you with our training aids and drills to help you to really get a feel for a repetitive stroke so that you can stand up to that three footer and feel like you can make it every time. So have patience as you work with the training aids. I'm really looking forward to teaching you the stroke because in putting, the purpose of the stroke is to roll the ball near the hole or in the hole every time. We're going to teach you technique and feel for the stroke. And really, there's no perfect putting stroke. I could stand here for years and teach you all the different styles, but I've got one that I want to show you that you're going to love. It's going to be repetitive, and it's going to give you a feeling that you've never had before because we're going to use the hanger. Now distance control is so important in the stroke, knowing how far to play those putts so that they can go right up near the hole time after time. We're going to teach you how to make a nice pendulum stroke and we're going to do that by using the hula hoop so that that pendulum stroke can make it consistent and solid right down the line every time. So let's get started. You use a different grip in putting than you do with your long shots. In putting, we want to immobilize that six finger. We don't want it on top so that the blade will roll all around. We're looking for a nice, consistent backwards and forwards motion with that club head to send it in the hole. So I'm going to teach you a drill that's going to help you to feel that. Bend over and put your hands down towards the ground. Clap your hands so your hands are totally facing each other and then just move your hands back and forth. That's the feeling we want to have with this pendulum stroke. The hands are facing each other. Now we got that with the ruler and you can do the same thing with that. Just put it in your palms and move it back and forth or you can get the feeling with a paddle like a little ping pong paddle. Watch this. The hands face each other and there's no rotation. The gravity drill will give you that feeling. If you want to take your putter, put your hands out in front of you with it, and then just relax your hands, relax those fingers, and let gravity out here just kind of pull that club head down. And you'll see that, especially in the left hand, it'll go from down underneath the sixth finger to being right up where it's on the side. Also in the right hand, it'll come right into the palm. Now when I bend over, those wrists are going to be immobilized from cocking, and it'll allow that club head to go back and forth on a nice straight line to send the ball into the cup. Now, how do the hands get connected? You know, we talked about that with the full swing where we had the overlap and the ten finger and the interlock. Well, this is the most common one for putting, and I use it, and that's just where the hands slip together and then you take your forefinger of the left hand and you slip it down over the right like this. Now you know what that does? That helps to immobilize those wrists and helps me to take that blade back and forth with that pendulum stroke time after time without any breaking down or cocking of the wrist. Here's how to aim the putter blade. Put your ruler down towards your target. Take your grip and then put the blade right into the middle of the ruler and you'll see that the little lines going across the ruler will help you to put that face square on your target. Then just make some little practice strokes keeping the face over the middle of the ruler back and through just rehearsing those strokes and that'll help you to see how that face stays nice and square throughout the stroke. Now another way that you can see that is to take your little shaft bar, slide it up on your shaft, line up the top line with the leading edge of the putter, and then place the putter down just outside the ruler so that the putt bar line here is right in the middle of your ruler. Take your grip and then work back and forth with the putt bar right over the ruler. That'll help you see the direction that the face is pointing and it works kind of like an archer's bow. 
You see that? Right down to the hole, put it over the top, and work with it back and forth. You've got to have that blade square to the hole when you take your stance every time. Let me tell you how to find the sweet spot on your putter. Because it's important to have that spot right behind the ball time after time. Take your putter up and hold it lightly between your thumb and forefinger and begin to tap it with your finger. If the blade's moving around, then you know that you're too far out to the toe, like I'm doing right here. If I come in closer, pretty soon the blade will start just swinging back and forward. I get it into the heel, you can see it's moving around there. So I want to find this sweet spot. And if you want to, you might want to put a little mark on that with a piece of tape or something so that you know where it is time after time. It's important to hit that putt right on that sweet spot to keep it straight time after time. Then when you put the club head behind the ball, square to the hole on the sweet spot, you know you're square and you can make your stroke backwards and forwards right to the cup. Now on the longer putts, we don't have that luxury of working in so close to the hole to line the blade up, so we spot hit. Like on this putt here, I'm probably going to find a little intermediate target here to roll the ball over to get it to the hole. Something that I can see in here close and line up my lines and then stroke it right through to the cup. Let's begin with the stance. A correct putting stroke will strike the ball right at the bottom of the arc where the blade is going perfectly parallel to the ground. So one way that you can check that position is by putting a penny and a dime down on the ground with the dime on top like this and then get into your position with your grip and begin taking little strokes over the top of the dime and the penny. Gradually lower yourself down until you make contact with the coins. Now you see I hit both of them that time, so it was too far back in my stance. So I'm going to continue to do this until I find right where I'm able to take that dime off the top of the penny consistently every time. So now this is the point that I need to work with as far as my stance goes. It's the bottom of my arc, and because the blade clipped the dime, it showed me that. Now the putter is really what dictates where you stand to the ball. As you put the putter blade down, it should be flat on the ground. You don't want it arced up on the heel or the toe. So when you go and select a putter, work with them in the pro shop and get one that feels real good for you, that you can take a good stance and that the blade is flat down on the ground. How can you tell if your eyes are over the ball? One way would be to take a little plumb bob hold it down right below your eyes over the ball and move in and adjust to where it's right straight down over your eyes to get that feeling. Another way would be the drop drill. And that's just to take a ball, put it between your eyes, get over to where you feel you're over the ball, and then just drop it. And you can see it drop just behind the ball, which means that it's on perfect alignment for my eyes. You have to have this proper posture and alignment to have the stroke go back and through. And we have to have our shoulders nice and parallel to our putting line because they really control more than anything where that ball goes when I strike it with the putter blade. And if you work on your posture and your alignment, you're going to make more putts. Strive for consistency with your stroke. Use your shaft bar, put it on your putter, line it up with the face, and then work on your grip with the gravity drill. Hold it out, let it go loose a little bit, feel it up in the palms, feel those palms facing each other. Get over the ruler line, work with that shaft bar back and forward, feeling the stroke, seeing how your hands and the shaft and the face are moving square to the target line. But you know those shoulders, they are, it's so important to have those on line. Because if they move back around like in a normal swing, they'll really open and close the face of the putter. 
pick up your tempo ball and you may want to shorten it a little bit, put it down where you'd normally be putting, get into your putting stance, and then just let the ball swing back and forward. Now see, I can do this very easily, but I, and I can change my stance. As long as I keep my shoulder square, I can move all over the place. But as soon as I start moving my shoulders around, that ball is just going to move everywhere. So the shoulders are key in the putting stroke to have those on line. And the way you get that feeling is by working with the hanger. When you use the hanger, it'll give you that true pendulum motion with your shoulders on line. So that a true pendulum stroke will be developed. This is a great exercise too if you've got a heavy sledgehammer to put it under your shoulders and swing it back and forth. Feel that nice pacing motion of the hands and the forearms. And now I'm going to bring Nancy up to show just how to use that hanger. I'm here with Nancy and we're going to show you how to use your hanger to develop that upper body motion that's so essential for a pendulum motion with your putter. So Nance, come in and slip it over your elbows just like that. Okay. And you may have to bring your elbows out a little bit farther. You see the arrow here on the hook? Uh-huh. Now adjust yourself in okay, does that towards right? the ruler until you get the arrow right over the center line on the ruler. You okay. have it in focus now? Uh-huh. Now go ahead and move the blade back and forth and watch the arrow so that it goes right along the line. Pace it. Now you should be feeling how your elbows are staying parallel to the line. Do you feel that? Sure do. Now watch the arrow go back and forth. And what this is doing, it's inhibiting you, it's keeping you from rotating your shoulders around like a regular shot. That's the tendency that you're going to have because you're standing to the side of the ball and then also on a full shot you'll have a tendency to have your shoulders rotate just in response to making a golf swing. So when you work with the hanger and the arrow, pacing it back and forth, it keeps the rotation in the shoulders out and it allows you to gain a feeling, a pacing feeling of the shoulders and you know you're square because you've set everything right. This stroke will produce a nice end over end roll on the ball. Let's just test that out. I'm going to take a little ball and put it down next to the line. Let me get it perfectly straight for you. I don't want to put any extra pressure on you yet. <laughs> now I want you to take a couple practice strokes, working the arrow that away. You feel it? Uh huh. Do you see it? Sure do. There we go. Now work on over now and just transfer that feeling and get a nice pendulum stroke. Roll that ball end over end. Great. There we go. And that's what the hanger should do for you when you work with it. Pace your arms back and forth. Use it. Optically see that little arrow going along the line and you're going to be able to roll it end over end right into the cup every time. When you work with your ruler in the living room or out on the practice tee, Lay it down a little bit towards the left edge of the cup, just like this, so that your blade can go in parallel and you can practice alongside of it time after time. You can use the little lines in the middle of it to help you see the alignment of the face. And then because you've done this with your arms using the hanger, you know what that feeling is like. Rehearse over the middle, step into it, and make your putt. Another way that you can use the ruler is to put the blade in the middle and work with it just pacing back and forth over the white, middle of the blue, middle of the yellow, and then on for a little longer putt to feel that pendulum motion. That's what this is all about. Having a consistent stroke that gets the blade back and through square to the hole time after time. On the longer putts, let the club just naturally swing around 
in its natural arc. You don't want to try to keep it square all the time like this, but we want to let it go back and make its natural turn and through to the hole. Don't get frozen on the long putts. Keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. Get your alignment. Just let the putter blade swing around like your normal stroke, like a door, opening and closing. But you know the face is going to be square because you've had that feeling from practicing with the coat hanger over and over again. Now, Nance, come on in. And I want you to stroke a putt up here to the hole. Okay, go ahead. Okay, now you need to play it up a little bit higher because you saw the, how the break went over there. Uh -huh. So what I'm going to do is put a T here and one up here. And I want you to roll it between those two T's now. Okay. To play it into the cup. You need to adjust your stance over as if it's a straight putt. Aim between the T's and let the break of the green roll it into the cup. Just roll it between the two. All right, let me narrow it down a little bit more. Now go ahead, let's try another one. And this is a great drill that you can do. You keep narrowing it, and it helps you get your alignment and feel for the distance. Boy, you just about got that one. Let's take one more. And you keep narrowing the tees in until you have a little gate for the ball to roll on. And working with distance is key in the putting stroke. One more time, Nance. Looks pretty good. Almost. Now let's get into another area. Let's start with the ladder drill. This is a good one for feeling distance and direction. I've got these clubs laid out at different increments. I'm starting up with a 20-foot putt and working back 18, 16, and 14 feet. Now the object is to roll it straight up there to the hole and get that distance. Feeling it roll all the way up by the hole. And then I want to try to roll it in between the second and the third. I'm going to try to feel that distance to stop it right in there. And now up closer, rolling it right into that position. If you practice this one, you're going to really get a feel for distance and also for direction. Now another one you can work on when you're on the green is to simply roll the ball up and try to stop it right at the edge of the green. I've got to hit way up there, and I'm going to feel that distance. I'm going to look at it, and when you're playing on the course, be sure to rehearse your putts. Feel the distance. All the way up to the edge of the green. Let's let it stop right on the edge. Ho, baby. There we go. How's that? Then roll at different pins. I'm going to roll at the second one over there. Feel the distance. Roll it up. Try to get it close. Go around the green and work on your long putts. And now Nancy is going to join me to give you some drills for short putts. OK, Nance. This is a great one for beginning golfers because it teaches you pacing your stroke and direction. Lay a couple balls down at one foot, two foot, and three foot. Take a practice stroke. Work on your fundamentals and stroke it in. Now you've worked on these at home, so you should have a good feeling for them. OK, now at two feet, straight back, straight through. Good, she's got a great stroke. And three feet, back and through. Excellent. Now let's go up and work on a drill to teach the break of a putt. Now on this putt, we've stuck the tees down. We've already worked on it. We know that the ball should roll around the tees to come in. She's felt how that water's rolling down if we dump that bucket of water up here. And we know that every putt's a straight putt. So it looks like when she lines up that she's stroking that ball up into here. 
but that's the object of playing brakes. You find out where it's going to break, you line up there, you stroke it, and you let the slope of the hill take it in. So go ahead, Nance. Now you want to aim it right about here. Okay. Roll it right around the outside of the tees. Okay, one more time. And as you practice this drill, you'll begin to feel also how firm you have to stroke it. Now, just nice and smooth. This next progression, it's called a spoke drill. Now we're going to find out how to make putts that have right to left breaks, straight downhill, and left to rights, and then straight up the hill. So let's start with the right to left. Play the break, stroke it in, and then the downhill. That's right. And when you practice, always go through your fundamentals. Set the face, then the arms, and stroke. Real nice. Now the left to right. Fundamentals. Pace the arms. It's a straight putt right up to the left of that cup. Straight back, straight through. Okay, let's get the last one now. Go over all the fundamentals. The first thing you do now is you square the blade, set your hands and arms, eyes over the ball, work the pendulum back and forth. Fantastic, you haven't missed one yet. Okay, last one is rolling the stripe balls. And this one really gives you the essence of that end over end stroke. You don't want the stripes to wiggle at all. When you stroke it, they should go end over end right into the cup, so. Do you want me to hit one? Go ahead, roll them up in there. Great. End over end, use the pendulum, back and forth. Uh-oh, let's try it again. Line the stripe up. Great. Nice and smooth. Take your time. Work the elbows back and forth. Beautiful. Now, when you get out on the golf course, you've got your own stripe ball. Because all you have to do <laughs> is take the decal on the ball and lay it towards the hole. So move it up Something a little like closer. This? Move it a little closer. Okay. There you go. Nancy was telling me she does this when she plays in her tournaments. And I think it's a very effective way, probably the most effective way to get that line and stroke it in, end over end. Roll that Titleist right over the end. Fantastic. And work with all these drills. They'll help build your confidence more than anything else when you go out and putt on the golf course. In closing, I hope you enjoyed this section because putting is over 40% of your game. Work with the training aids and the drills but putt for distance because that's the most important factor after you've gotten lined up, to feel the distance on the long putts and to pace your arms on the short ones. The training aids will give you the feel that you need to produce over and over again, especially the hanger with the arrow going right down the ruler. That is the one that I like most of all because it really will keep your shoulders right on track, which brings that putter blade right square to the hole and the ball's going to go in and your scores are going to get lower.